Welcome back, friends. Today, we are gonna be reviewing Aventon's second generation of the Solterra. This is called the Solterra 2. It's got some unique features about it, so let's get into it. I really like the look of this bike. This Solterra here is a class two e-bike, which means you can go up to 20 miles an hour via the thumb throttle here on your left or your four levels of pedal assist. You have Eco, Tour, Sport, and Turbo. This does have a torque sensor and it will connect to your Aventon app, although it cannot be unlocked past 20 miles an hour. This bike only weighs 41 pounds, but it has a maximum payload capacity of 300 pounds. It's also IPX4 rated. And what that means is that if you get caught out in the rain with this bike, it's not gonna be an issue at all. It's totally gonna be fine, but just don't go swimming with it. Aventon says that the Solterra 2 will do 46 miles using pedal assist and 20 miles using throttle only. Now, when I took a look, that mileage is based on a 160 pound rider riding on flat land in Pedal Assist Eco. That's not how I test bikes, we all know it, so I expect to get half that range. Currently, the Solterra 2 sells for $13.99. Now, this comes in two different versions and two different colors. First, it comes in a step-over version. The step-over version comes in two sizes. You have a regular, which is good for those riders who are 5'3 to 5'10, and a large that is good for riders that are 5'10 to 6'4. It comes in two colors. You have the citrine yellow and midnight black. They also have a step through model, which is what I have here. It comes in two sizes as well. You have a small medium, which is good for riders who are 4'11 to 5'7. Then they also have a medium large, which is great for riders who are 5'7 to 6'1. The step through also comes in two colors. It has this ghost white right here and a storm blue. The Solterra 2 has a 36 volt, 350 watt, brushless rear hub motor. It also has a Shimano seven speed transmission with a tourney derailleur and the Shimano Revershift shifter. Stopping power is brought to you by the Tektro mechanical brake system and the 180 millimeter rotors. The Solterra has a 700C by 38C tire on it. And what that means is this is 27 inches and this is an inch and a half. Now this is a street tire. It has a great street tread and it has a reflective sidewall Plus, of course, they're puncture resistant. When it comes to the batteries on the Solterra 2, well, they use UL certified LG cells, which means they're gonna be the best that you can put in this bike currently right now. Actually, they put that in all of their bikes. This one is a 36 volt, 9.6 amp hours, and it has 360 watt hours of power. It comes with a 36 volt, two amp hour charger, which means you can charge this bike up within a matter of four to five hours. The battery is removable, but you don't have to take it out of the bike to charge it. You can actually, there's a charging port right over here, or you can pop it out, right here is where it is, and you can charge it inside. Right here's a key. You're gonna get two of these keys to pop it out. We're just gonna turn that a little bit right there. You're gonna put the key in, turn it. There's a little lever right here, turn that as well, and it comes right out. Putting it in, just as simple, right? You're gonna put it in bottom first. and you're good to go. Cockpit operations. What is up with this? Why is do we have a beautiful black and white bike, but this is yellow? This doesn't go with the bike at all. Not sure why it's there, why it's this color, but we're gonna replace it because that will drive me nuts. On your left-hand side, you have these really nice rubber grips. They are single locking here on the side. They have a cap on the end, making it super easy for you to put like a bar end mirror or something like that on it, which I will be doing. Here is your throttle. Right here is your front brake lever, but check this out. Right here, there's a bell. And then right here is your control panel. To turn the bike on, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold down on that middle button and you're gonna see this full color display. Now, before I forget, which I often do, there is a USB port underneath here that you can use to bring power to your phone on long trips. This display is beautiful. It always looks great. Right here in these buttons, you push them up, to increase your levels of pedal assist, you use the lower button to drop it down. Here are your turn signal buttons. Whenever you push this to the left, it activates your turn signal. And as you can see, it gives you a turn signal indicator. After 15 blinks, it will turn off automatically. That way you're not 
you know, looking silly riding around that way, this button right here activates it to the other side. Now, if you make a turn and you want to turn it off, you just hit the button again. So whatever side you're turning on, you just hit that button again to turn off the blinkers. The display has two indicators. Number one, it tells you the percentage that you have, and then it also gives you this nice bar display. Right here, your miles per hour is prominently shown, and you have different functionality. Right here, it shows the spike has nine miles, uh, the total amount of time on it. Just push the little I button here in the middle to change the screen, average speed, max speed, CO2 burn, tree saved, right? Things like that. So it's all right in there. To turn on the headlight, we're just going to hold the plus button. You're going to watch the screen dim. There it is. And right now it just turned on your headlight and your dual brake lights in the back. To turn it off, you're just going to hold the plus sign again and it'll turn it off. This bike also has a walk feature and you activate that by just holding down the minus button. And when you do that, you'll see the walk indicator show up where Eco was and it's starting to spin. Right? I, I lifted up the back tire so it doesn't take off on us. And then just let off of it and it stops the walk feature. On your right hand side you also have a single locking grip with an end cap and a palm rest right here. This texture right here feels pretty good. It also feels a lot similar to the grip and you just shift gears by doing that. Over here you also have your rear brake lever. You can also adjust settings by connecting it to the Aventon app. There are some additional features about this bike. Number one, it has metal pedals. It has a quick release seat post. This is a Cell Royale seat. Um, I do like the configuration in it. I have put a little mileage on this bike, so this is pretty decent, but there are accessories that you can get for this bike. So let's go ahead and throw them on. First things first, you're probably gonna wanna get rid of this. <laughs> I don't know, I just, I don't like it. So there's a little rubber cap. Just go ahead and pull that off. And then all we have to do is unhook this. I have a new one and we're gonna put it on. Much better. We have the accessories added. We added the fenders and we have the rear rack, which holds 35 pounds. And we have the front rack, which holds 26 pounds. All these items can be purchased along when you purchase your bike on the event and website. Now the accessories I've added include this foldy lock, which I use on all of my bikes, this half knee bar and mirror, and this light from Magic Shine. I like it because it has a really nice flashing pattern to it and it lasts forever. Now that we have added a Venton's accessories and my accessories, well, we're ready to take the Saltera 2 out on the road and see how it does. Another beautiful day here in Chicago. We are out here uh, riding. We have no power going on on the bike right now, which you can easily do about 11 miles an hour. And uh, I think I'm in gear like three or four totally comfortable. We kick it down a gear. Oop, that was up a gear. Takes a little bit to get used to this which way to go, but really it makes sense. If you click this way, you're going higher. If you bring it down, you're going lower. With that being said, we're cruising about nine, 10 miles an hour. We just went up a little hill. Ah, there we go. Now we're in gear two. And this bike is pretty easy to ride without any power. So that is a good thing to know. It's throttle test time. Let's see how fast uh, this throttle can go. It should take you up to 20. We're just hitting it right now. Takes off pretty slow, pretty gentle. This is a 350 watt motor, but this throttle should take us up to 20 miles an hour. And once it gets going, it's going. It's also still pretty quiet. And as you can see, the throttle is holding us at about 20.2 miles an hour. We're gonna do the pedal assist levels now. Since this is a class two bike, they can only do 20 miles an hour. I'm gonna see if there's any difference in what I feel power-wise between the four levels of pedal assist. So we have it in eco right now, and we're just gonna take off and see how that feels and how fast I can actually go with it in eco mode, which should be 20 miles an hour. Yeah, see, so we'll cruise at like 19.6. I think that's where it just kind of like stays. I had the throttle doing the same thing as well, but then it shot up to 20 for a hot minute, but it really went back down to 19.6. Let's go ahead and put it into tour mode, see if I feel any difference. Nah, I didn't figure I would. I have tested torque sensors before, and when I've done them, when they're set up correctly, that the different levels of pedal assist that come through seem to only be effective when going up hills. So let's see if I feel a difference when I put it into sport. And I don't, which I didn't figure I would. And then we'll just go ahead and put it into turbo, see if we feel it. It'll be on the hill climb where you're really gonna notice the difference on this. 
Let's go ahead and do the speedometer test here real quick to see where we're at and see how accurate the display is. Normally these displays are pretty accurate. So as you can see, yep, it is accurate. Man, it is 87 degrees outside and I am already sweating and we just started this road trip. Let's see how long it takes us to go from zero to top speed just using the throttle. 19.6 is the number I'm gonna be looking for. Right there, 23 seconds. Now let's see how quick I can hit 20 miles an hour. I put it in turbo mode to give me the most power as I take off. I'm gonna give it all the cranking. I drop down in gears. So let's see how it goes. Let's go. Oh, we're climbing. 22.4 is the fastest I got it. I'll have to look back at post to see when we hit 20 but I think we just did a top speed test at the same time. But now I'm just curious, how long will it take us to get to the 22 miles an hour that was top speed, but I'm gonna use throttle, I'm gonna use pedal assist. I'm gonna start off with that, let's go, let's see. Boom, nine seconds. This bike is silent and smooth. All right, let's talk size and fit. Now this bike is about 69 inches long, 68, 69. I don't know, I measured it with my tape measure. There's a fender on the back. I don't know if that affects it, but it's close. It's super close. And when it comes to seat post size, well, this is numbered, so that's really nice. So that is the lowest size right there, as you can see, All right? This cannot be adjusted up, but you can move those handlebars uh, angle because they have that curved part forward and back to help with uh, comfort. I am sweating all over everything. It is super hot. Okay, this is your highest seating position right there. <laughs> I gotta wipe the sweat out of my eyes. Okay, I'm gonna put it back to my setting, which was right there. It does make it super easy when they're numbered. As you can see, I do have my Rock Bros case on the back and the good part about that is is I have an extra battery for this bike in here since I did review the original Solterra well the battery that fits in the old one fits in the new one I already tested it out fired it up made sure that it worked but also you know you you, you might think that hey when I put something on here well it blocks the brakes and the turn signals in the back but let me show you okay as you can see the brake lights you can see the brake lights from here and then also your turn signals and now that we've got that figured out, well, let's continue on. Oh, nice breeze now that we're moving. You ever get so hot, like the, the sweat goes through your eyes and you can't even see? That's basically what was going on when I was giving you guys size and fit. But now that we're moving, oh, it's so much better. And this bike is so quiet, it's so smooth. It is brake test time. As you can see, I am on the road that I normally use. They're doing a bunch of construction over here, but it looks like the road is clear, so that's what we're gonna use. We're gonna get up to 20 miles an hour, slam on the brakes, and see how quick this thing stops. Now, let's not forget, it does have mechanical brakes, but I have a feeling they're gonna work really well. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> where are we at? Like 23 feet. Let's get that. Let's do that again. I know I reviewed the original Soterra and it stopped at 24 feet. And now we're doing it at 23. So we're still all within there. So second brake test. Here we go. We're at 20. Ooh, that was rough. Ugh. Ooh, 23 feet again. I knew these brakes were gonna work well because they worked well on the previous bike. So it seems like between this version, the version two and the original version that we, uh, the brakes cut us off a foot earlier. So instead of 24 feet, we're doing 23. And look, they felt great. You know, I used to beat up mechanical brakes, but uh, they, they work great on these Solteras. This front rack, although it's small, I think it fits perfectly for this bike. And you have that little drink holder, which I don't have a drink with me to put in there. I do have a bottle of water that's in my bag, but we'll see how that fits in there. 
let's go ahead and take it off road a little bit. I always like to cut through here. We're using throttle only at the moment. There is no suspension on the front forks or on the back. And these tires are smaller than what we're used to, but we're moving right along. I mean, you could cut through here. Would I want to take this on some mountain bike trails? Absolutely not. But could you cut through some grass to get where you need to be? Absolutely. Uh oh, this is always rough. All right, we're going to do this gently. Okay, there we go. All right, let's go climb a hill. All right, here we are at the hill. I know this bike's not going to make it up, but we're going to go ahead and give it a shot anyways, just in case there's something different about it. We're going to go uh, throttle only. It's how we do it for the first attempt. So let's give it a shot and let's go. And we're just creeping on the takeoff. And I know this isn't going to work, but, but if we pedal, we're going to go up really, really simply. Yeah, like we're not making it far at all. Like this is, it's not even worth it. Let's turn around. Yeah, let's turn around. So let's go ahead and give it a shot this way. We're going to try it with just pedaling. Oh, you know what? Let's put it in eco mode. I have it down into like second gear. And can we make it up this hill? And I'm going to show you the difference on these torque sensors on how that works. All right, so we're, we're heading up this hill. We're going to be able to make it. Ooh, we're kicking it down. I think I was in third gear. Yeah, so now we're in first. And yes, you can make it up the hill. You absolutely can. It's, I mean, it's, it's a little bit difficult, not that hard though. All right, and then what we're gonna do is we're going to put it in higher. We started off in eco, we're gonna put it into touring and give it a shot that way. We have it in tour, let's go. And see, it automatically feels easier now that I'm in a higher, pedal assist mode, All right? We can, we can do it. You're still gonna feel it on your legs, but you can get it done. All right, let's just go ahead and put it into sport. And we'll give that a shot. And here we go in sport, right? Like now when you feel it less on the legs, I mean, it is, you still feel it on your legs. I mean, you are, but it's giving you more support and more power while climbing. All right, one more time. <laughs> Come on, Turbo. Make this easy on me. All right, Turbo. Let's go. Oh my gosh, there's such a huge difference. You can tell probably by the way I'm pedaling that you can do it a lot faster. Oh man, whenever you see a hill like this, just save yourself and put it in turbo. I like how these hand grips work and I really like how this shifter is working while I'm riding around today on this bike. For this trip, I'm gonna try to keep the bike in eco since we know that we can go 20 miles an hour in eco. You know, I'm just cruising this thing because that's what it feels comfortable. I know it's hit or miss with me when it comes to these Cell Royale seats, but when I tested the original Solterra, I like the seat on that. And I like the seat on this one as well. I'm not sure if they're the same seat, I'm gonna end up having to do a comparison video to see what the difference is between these two, like physically. But uh, until then, I can tell you that I wouldn't have to switch this seat out at all. It's pretty comfortable. I think it goes along with this bike very well. All right, guys, we are at our first stop and we're already at 47% battery power, but we have done 10.7 miles. Now Strava shows that we've done 11.6, so it's about a mile off. And with this front rack that I mentioned, look, this bottle fits in there really well but i think that if you went to like mcdonald's or some fast food place and you got like a bag to go boom you just got a meal you put it in there pretty sure that cup would fit right in there and then you could just come to a park or take it home and it wouldn't be an issue so let's go ahead we're going to head out to lakeshore drive and actually see how many miles we can get out of this bike
we are at our second stop. We have made it to Lakeshore Drive. Um, we are at 18% battery power. Strava shows that we are at 16.19 miles. Um, the display shows we are at 15.5. So it's still consistent with being about a mile off. Um, this bike is running really smooth. I mean, this thing is super easy to ride. It's very nimble. And I don't know, I'm, I'm really having a good time today. It is beautiful weather to ride. So let's keep riding and let's run this puppy out of battery. After stopping for that quick update, I looked down and the battery shot up to 21%. So we are back down to 19%. Although you see some fluctuation, it seems to correct itself pretty quickly. Make up your mind. We are down to 7% battery power, so let's go ahead and see if our throttle's still working. And it is. So just like with the original bike, low battery doesn't mean you lose everything like you do with some other bikes. I mean, we're moving right along. I mean, we just went up a hill and it dropped down to 5%. Now it's showing 4%, so it's just eating it up while you're using the throttle. So let's uh, not do that as we are heading home. I really do love the bell on the Solterra to the effect of where if, like, if I could buy me some of these aftermarket ones, I'd put them on my bikes. It's just so conveniently located. It's out of the way. It's down there where your finger naturally is anyways. We are down to 4% battery power and we still have throttle. This bike does a really great job of battery management and the amount of power that you can get to it considering how low the battery is. Now the battery is showing 0%, but I'm pretty sure that that's not real. And uh, to prove it, let's go ahead and hit the throttle. And we still have throttle. Well, here we go. This is at the very end. We made it 24.4 miles there, but Strava says we did 21.42. And because of you know the different reviews that I've done using Strava, I pretty much believe that one over this one so you're actually going to be traveling farther than what you think you're going to be showing on this display by about a mile and a half all right i made it home it was super nice just to be able to change out that battery to make it the rest of the way although i was only three miles from home when i did run out of battery as i showed you you know one of the things about this bike is that not only is it quiet and smooth but just something about the riding position that works out really well at least for me it does and I really ended up liking this Revo shifter. I don't, I don't know why, it just seemed super easy as opposed to just hitting like a trigger shifter or some other kind of thumb shifter. It was just twisting my wrist to get it in the right gear. And this bike is geared really, really well. And what I mean by that is like with some bikes, when you get to the seventh gear, then uh, you can still feel like some possible ghost pedaling at 20 miles an hour. But with this bike, I found myself most comfortable in gear six instead of gear seven. So that kind of tells you that this bike is really geared nicely. I mean, I know that it doesn't have like hydraulic brakes, but it's still an extremely nice bike. Something about how these levers work and stuff and how they feel, I didn't really, it didn't really bother me the fact that it didn't have hydraulic brakes. Also, you know, when they first came out with these turn signals, I felt like it could have been kind of like a gimmick. And the funny part is, is I use these turn signals all the time. I, I feel safer when I use these turn signals. I don't know why now, I still do the hand signals just in case, but I like the turn signals on bikes. I just do, I think it's great. Um, it'd be cool if we had them in the front. It's an idea right there. Now, if you are interested in the Solterra too, well, please go ahead, click my link down below. Not only does that help out my channel if you decide to purchase one, but either way, it lets Event know that you value my videos. I will also have all the links to the items that I use to put on this bike to make the review, so no big deal there. I appreciate you guys coming along on this review and thank you for watching. So until I see you next time, enjoy the ride.